Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and I think there's quite a lot of interest in the place that I'm going to focus on today. It calls itself the cradle of winemaking, but it's also just reappearing on the winemaking map after some darker times. I'm of course talking about the country Georgia that sits on the border between Europe and Asia. I'm not talking about the US peach state or the Georgia somebody had on his mind. I said I'm Georgia. Mmm, Georgia. Let's go. Georgia is happening right now. The wine world is talking about this country that has been making wine for millennia in a very archaic way. As a matter of fact, the oldest wine artifacts that have been found are pottery jars with wine traces in them. They were found in Georgia and the oldest one dates back to 5980 BC, roughly 8 thousand years ago. But that a country has been producing wine for a long time doesn't necessarily mean that it produces great wine today. You know, before the Georgian jars were found, the oldest wine artifacts were from Iran. Not necessarily a great wine producer today. Georgia's long history was only one of the reasons why I wanted to go there. I also wanted to understand their wine styles better. You know, if someone asked me what my favorite wine is, I usually say it's my most recent discovery. A region, grape variety or winemaking country that I haven't experienced before and I thought Georgia might be that. So when I got the chance I jumped on a plane and traveled to the cradle of winemaking. Georgia lies between Russia and Turkey on the border between Asia and Europe and it has beautiful mountains, forests that harbor bears and the food is just amazing. I rarely left the table not feeling like I overate. The climate is diverse. The west is subtropical, humid and moderate in temperature, while the east is more continental, more dry and, well, it can get really hot in summer and really cold in winter. There are 1,600 wineries that produce wine from 55,000 hectares of vineyards. That's roughly half of the vineyard size of the wine region of Bordeaux. The country is split up into 10 wine growing regions. The most important one by far is Cajeti that covers roughly 70% of all of the vineyards and that produces roughly 80% of all of the Georgian wine. The one thing Georgia is most famous for is however the way they are producing wine. They're making wine in a very archaic, very traditional way. Maybe in the same way that the wine in those 8,000 year old pottery jars was made. They harvest the grapes and then press them with their feet like they sometimes do in port or like I did for my pinot. They then put the skins, the stems, the juice, everything into quivery, the traditional clay amphoras and let that ferment for around a month. The quiveries are usually in the ground with only the opening visible. This is smart as the temperature gets controlled naturally so that the must doesn't heat up too much during fermentation. This process, however, also means that you have little to no control over what is happening in the quivery and you can't really intervene like you would be able to usually in a tank or in a barrel. Once the wine is dry and the fermentation stops, the quivery gets seared with a glass or stone lid and a clay chalk paste. The white wines usually stay on the skins over winter while the red wines only macerate for another month. During this period, the juice extracts even more flavor and tannins from the skin and the wine changes. The white wines are the original orange or amber wines. They are golden in color, smell of apricots and nuts and have a tannic taste. After my video on orange wine, I was asked to refer to these wines as amber wines so that I don't create confusion with the fruit or the wine growing region in Australia. I think in Georgia, amber wine is the more common term anyways. After the maceration time, the wine gets separated from the skin and usually ages for another year in a different quivery. Those quiveries tend to be bigger than the ones used for fermentation. Quiveries tend to be between 800 and 3,500 liters in size. Don't get me wrong, most wines in Georgia are not made in that way. People tend to think that all wines in Georgia are made in a quivery, but that is not the case. Quivery wines are difficult to make and they are an acquired taste. Today that amber wines are becoming more popular, people also want to taste the original, the OG from Georgia. But even amongst orange or amber wines, Georgian quivery wines kind of stand out as they are pretty extreme. There are lots of normal red and white wines coming out of Georgia, but for this video I want to focus on quivery wines because I think those are the ones that you are most interested in. And to be honest, 
they were also the ones that resonated the most with me while I was traveling through Georgia. So I got this selection of four Georgian Quavery wines. One is red, and the rest is white. You can see they are all sealed under wax, which is very common amongst amber wine producers from Georgia, or I think amongst amber wine producers from all over the world. And I haven't tasted them before, so I'm looking forward to trying them together with you. But before I go on, let me first say thank you to Masterworks, a sponsor on this channel. 2022 was a financially challenging year, even for traditional investments such as stocks and bonds, who have lost a combined 36 trillion US dollars. It doesn't look like it's getting any better soon, as 91% of US CEOs think there will be a recession in the next 12 months. That's why, apart from my mainstream assets, I've also invested into tangible objects such as wine, real estate and art in order to diversify my portfolio. I've talked about Masterworks a few times now and have invested with them, as they figured out a way that you can invest into blue chip art without spending millions. I actually bought shares in paintings of Günther Oecker and Pablo Picasso and and their platform is really easy to use. Masterworks are opening up the art market for all of us to reap the potential benefits of an increased interest in art. In fact, just recently they sold another painting, this time for 17.8% net return. The other last three exits have all produced a very good return on investment, over 17%, over 21% and over 33% net. Hundreds of thousands of investors are using Masterworks and they have great paintings of some of the best painters in the world in their portfolio. However, investments can go up and down and this does not constitute financial advice. If you click the link in the description, you can skip the 2000 plus waitlist and invest alongside me today. Thank you for Masterworks and now let's get back to the wines. So the first one is the 2020 Ritvalesi Ricazzitelli Quaveri wine from Cajeti that retails for 20 US dollars and I'm very sorry for my Georgian pronunciation. If you can't follow, just look into the description below the video because I'm going to put all of the wines in there. By the way, I'm also putting down which wine key I'm using and which glasses I'm using so that you can see that. This is kind of the most common question I get. So I just put it down in the description and you can look it up yourself. The grape variety Ricazzitelli is very old. They have found Ricazzitelli seeds in old clay and forest. They dated back to 3000 BC. That is very old. It might have been during Soviet times one of the most widely planted white grape varieties as it is pretty popular in Eastern Europe and Asia. So most people would have never heard of Ricazzitelli, but it's actually quite widespread. So this wine was made in Quavery in the traditional method, they call it. It has 12% of alcohol, so it's fairly low in alcohol. And I'm looking forward to tasting it. There's actually a warning on the label saying that the wine was not filtered and therefore there might be sediment. I think that's pretty typical for Quavery wines that are, they are quite slightly cloudy. So this is definitely golden in color. It's not the most wild orange wine color or amber wine color. Um, it's slightly cloudy, like I said earlier. So there's a little bit of sediment floating around in there. There might be more at the bottom of this bottle um, than on the top. But yeah, it looks good, appealing. On the nose, you have these very typical orange wine, amber wine flavors of dried apricots, walnuts. It's um, There's also a little bit of orange zest there. So there's quite a lot of like yellow fruits or orange fruit flavors and it's intense but quite balanced. Wow, on the palate it shows its youth. It's still quite grippy and intense. The tannins are very present. There's good freshness in the end so it's not the most concentrated rich orange wine even though the tannins are quite yeah have a little bit of bite but um it's fresh and vibrant in the finish. This is something I've never seen before. This actually has a producing date, I think it says, or production date. It's the 12th of May, 2022. So I'm guessing that's the date when this wine was bottled. This is kind of odd, but also makes, makes sense. I mean, I think with wines that are aged for a longer time in barrel, 
It would also be nice to know when exactly it was put in bottle, not only when it was harvested or when the grapes were harvested, but also when the maturation process in the winery basically ended. Yeah, I think this is a really nice orange wine. It's kind of light and fresh. It's not the most concentrated and profound orange wine. I'm going to rate it 87 points. I think this would be beautiful with chicken, like fried chicken or chicken from the oven. Um, quite a nice, fresh, vibrant, grippy orange wine. The next wine is the 2019 Yuzo Skizi from Cajeti that retails for 30 US dollars. This is a natural cuvée wine made from the grape variety Kisi. Kisi is mainly grown in eastern Georgia and it almost went extinct because it produces lower quantities, lower yields, and therefore was ripped out and replaced by other higher yielding grape varieties. But it's kind of making a comeback today and it's looked at as one of the more high quality white grape varieties for the production of quavery wines. Another funny thing I noticed on this label was that it actually says limited edition. This kind of is, isn't every wine from a specific vintage limited. Well, anyways, just made me smile. Some people commented that I should not peel off the wax and instead just pierce the, uh, the corkscrew through the wax and then pull it out. The problem is that oftentimes you have some wax residue here on the lip of or the mouth of the bottle and then that might end up in my glass and I don't really like that. The color is really orange. If you Google orange, then you get that color basically. This wine is also 12% alcohol, but it's much more profound, intense and complex than the previous wine. It smells also of apricots, but you also have these aromas of peaches. You again have nutty flavors coming through. There's also a herbaceous note there. So it's really complex, quite lifted, quite intense, but very clean. On the palate, it's really intense, fresh and vibrant. You have some grip, you have a fresh finish, but you also have a little bit more power on the mid palate. So I'm quite impressed by this. This is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for in a good amber wine. It's complex, it's appealing, it's animating. I'm going to rate it 91 points. Well done, Yuzo. The next wine is a mouthful. It's the 2019 Teftzwa Georgian Quavery Crazy Amber Guli Motswane from the Kartli region that retails for 23 US dollars. So this wine is from Kartli, the region that surrounds the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi. It was fermented in 1200 to 1400 liter quaveries and then left on the skins for three months. The grape variety is Guruli Motswane, a grape variety that is also used for the production of sparkling wines. So this one is definitely really cloudy and there are some bigger chunks and pieces floating around at the bottom of the bottle, but well, it's all natural. Okay, let's give this a taste. Oh wow. This is really amber. Crazy amber. So yeah, this clearly has a touch of red in there as well. So it's quite dark and intense in color already. Let's see whether it also smells and tastes that way. Yeah, this is different. It's quite opulent and rich. It smells of apricots, oranges, blood oranges. So a little darker in flavor as well. On the palate, it's actually quite rich. The alcohol level is quite a bit higher. It's at 13.5 and there's less acidity. So it's more, yeah, more rich and more creamy in texture almost. The tannins are present, but they are well rounded and it has a long finish. I think this is a really nice change of pace. It's just a different style of amber wine and it's a little bit more rich. I think it's not as well defined as the previous wine, but it has more quality, more expression, more concentration than the first. So I'm going to rate this 89 points. And I think this is actually like a wine that you can drink with a piece of meat, like with even with beef or with pork for sure. The last one is the 2017 Marelli winery Saparavi from Cajeti, and I haven't really found a price for it. Saparavi is really popular in Georgia for the production of red wines. It's actually a Tanturier grape variety, so it doesn't only have a dark skin, but also the pulp is dark, so the flesh of the berry is also colored. 
And therefore, you usually get really intense dark red wines from this grape variety. So this is a red Quavery wine, which is not really as common. I haven't really found any figures on the production of Quavery wine, so I don't really know how much of it is red. But I would say that the vast majority is actually amber wines and well, and then there's also some red wine. So those wax capsules, they are creating a real mess here, but well, this place is messy anyways, to be honest. Well, as you can see, this is a really dark wine. Those Tenturier grape varieties, they produce wines, well, that are almost black in the core. You have a deep ruby color on the rim. So this is dark. On the nose, you get blackberry, elderberry. You also get some spicy peppery notes coming through but it's really fruit driven. You don't get any oak flavors, obviously, because the wine was fermented and aged in quavery in clay amphoras that don't really give off any flavor. Yeah, it's dark, intense. It's also a little bit weird. Um, it's almost a little bit funky, but interesting on the nose for sure. However, on the palate, it is quite something. I mean, this is a five year old wine, so this is not young. But the tannins are really grippy, really intense, a little bit green. The acidity is also quite pronounced. So this is difficult to taste without having like a really intense meal with it because yeah, all of those elements, they are just kind of a little bit too much for my palate. If you leave the skins in contact with the juice for too long, the wine might over extract tannins or if the tannins are not fully ripe when you harvest the grapes, those tenants can be a little bit too aggressive. And this is a little bit what this feels like to me. I think this is interesting, but not necessarily a wine that I would want to drink. Um, but it's not bad at all. I would rate it 81 points. So it's good, but just not, not quite right. I think, well, yeah, I don't know where to place this unless I'd have like a really intense meaty dish in front of me, then this probably wouldn't feel as rough around the edges. It would be more polished and a little bit more round. All right, this was fun, even though it wasn't always easy on my palate. I like tasting these wines because they are so different. It's just, well, a breath of fresh air. It's not your normal Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Riesling, Cabernet Sauvignon, whatever. It's different grape varieties, a very different way of making wines that kind of transports you back into the past and into another place. So I find that really fascinating. For me, the best wine in the tasting was definitely the Yuzo's wine. And uh, I also liked the Tefsa, um, but the other two were, well, not quite at the same level. I thought the red Travery wine was just a little bit too much for me. This one, well, it's fun. It's a good wine. But out of the four, I would definitely recommend the users. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel. You know the deal. My question is, what do you think about Jordan wine? Have you tasted any? Comment down below and let me know which ones you liked and which ones you didn't. I hope I see you guys again very, very soon. Until then, I'll drink a lot of Cravey wine and enjoy myself. And I hope that you stay thirsty too. Bye.